Welcome to the third chapter, the book of Deuteronomy. The last chapter we had Moses telling the people how God wanted them to go up into Edom and then attacking the Amorites, King Sihon, Heshbon, and now it continues on up further north. It says, in turning, we ascended the way, Odon, odometer comes from that, uh, into Basan. Um, Bashan is up north where today the Golan Heights of uh, Syria are. Uh, this is where Bashan was. And came forth Og, the Vasilefs of Basan, the king of Bashan, to meet with us, that is to go to war, he and all his people, for war uh, at Edraim. And the Lord said to me, You should not foe, foe uh, fear him. Well, there's a good reason to fear him, as we find out he's a giant. For into your hands I will deliver him and all his people and all his land. And you shall do to him as you did to Sihon, king of the Amorites, who dwelt in Heshbon. And the Lord our God delivered him into our hands, even Og, king of Bashan, and all his people. And we struck him until the, uh, the not being left behind any of his seed. So another time that they are destroying the whole people, everybody. And we held all of his cities in that time. There was not a city which we did not take from them. Sixty cities, all the places round about Argob of King Og in Bashan, so that was up around the Golan in Syria. All these cities were fortified with high walls, gates, and bars. Besides the cities of the Pharisaeon, the Perizzites, very many. So these Perizzites were apparently people that were, I think, on the other side in Canaan that came across. We utterly destroyed them as we did Sihon, king of Heshbon. And we utterly destroyed every city. Next also the women and the children. So again, they killed the women and the children, as we mentioned earlier. God has destruction of the ungodly planned and sending them to Hades, to hell, is a horrible place to go. And evil people are dealt with by God. He's, he's a judge, just as a judge that judges people and they have a law book and they know what the law is and they know what the uh, circumstances of the trial is all about, and then they have uh, the punishment that is due. So the judge, to do everything correctly, he would have to listen to everything. And then uh, if the founds a person is guilty, then he would punish them with the punishment meted out for them. He wouldn't uh, show mercy uh, or uh, he, or give them longer because he didn't like what they did or somebody was affected that he knew and cared for. God is this type of a judge. So the people, sinners, are going to be found guilty and they are going to be sent into Adis, the netherworld, um, Hades, hell, uh, place of darkness and place of, of fire, uh, lake of fire and the book of Revelation is not some place that people will be able to get out of, apparently, or nor can they cross over from there, uh, Hades, into uh, heaven where uh, the children of God are located because Jesus gives a story about Nazareth, the rich man, who had in Lazarus, the, the Lazarus was the poor man that sat at the rich man's uh, house begging and then when the rich man died he went to Hades and the poor man went to Abraham's bosom and it says that there was a chasm between the two places and so God is going to send people to that place and 
uh, I don't believe you. there's any way to get out of it except one, and that is through the belief of Jesus Christ and his deliverance of a person from that terrible place. So God shows here that he is capable of being harsh and by having the sons of Israel destroy the women and the children. People would say, well, God wouldn't do something like that. It would be a terrible God that did something like that. But God has had the Israelites do that before. And even before that was Abraham uh, sacrificing his son Isaac. Uh, that's what he wanted, but yet at the last moment he uh, stopped it. So they destroyed all these and the cattle and the spoils of the city we despoiled for ourselves. So this, uh, actually this here, I should cut that, cut that out, strike out uh, this right here. And there should be a semicolon here. And the spoils of the city, so it should be, and all the cattle and the spoils of the city, we despoiled for ourselves. So they took all of the animals for themselves to eat. And we took in that time the land from out of the hand of the two kings of the Amorites, who were on the other side of the Jordan, Og and uh, Sihon, from the rushing stream of Arnon unto Mount Hermon. And now a parenthetical statement, the Phoenicians, the Phoenicists, named Hermon, Hermon, Sanior, and the Amorite named it Sanir. Now the King James has Sirion and Shanir, but uh, the Greek is different. All the cities of Mesor and all Gilead and all Bashan unto Salca and Edri, cities of the kingdom of Og in Bashan. So here we are uh, with Bashan up here, north of the Sea of Galilee, where Og was. For only Og, king of Bashan, was left from the Raphaim, and these were the giants. Behold, his bed, a bed of iron, and this should be italicized. Behold, this is in the Acre, uh, capital, the high place of the sons of Ammon. Nine cubits was the length of it. The bed was 13 and a half feet long. And uh, six, six, boy, the bed that I have, I think, is uh, maybe six and a half feet, seven at the most. It's almost twice as big. <laughs> and four, uh, six cubits was the breadth of it, cubit of a man. And we mentioned in the last chapter how the Rephaim uh, were mentioned as possibly the, they were the giants, the sons of God having uh, relations with the uh, wives of men. And these giants were formed, and he was here, it says, the last of them. I believe they even had six fingers and six toes, because it mentions that uh, in when we get to the book of Judges, one of the kings. And that land we inherited in that time from Aror, which is by the bank of the stream of the Arnon. So down the Aror uh, is uh, down here. Uh, there's a Jabok is up where Gilead is. Uh, here it is, the Arnon and the Aror. And Gilead is this area over here, a very fertile area, part of Jordan today. And the half of the mountain of Gilead. And his cities I gave to Reuben and Gad. So Reuben and Gad are the southern part there. And the remainder of Gilead and all Bashan, the northern part, the kingdom of Og I gave to the half-tribe of Manasseh in all the place round about Argob. All that Bashan shall be considered the land of the Raphaim. And Eir, Jair, son of Manasseh, took all the place round about Argob unto the borders of the Geshuri, Geshurites and the Makathi, Makathites. And he named them after his name, Vasan, Avoth, Iair, Iair, 
until this day. And to Machir I gave Gilead. And to Reuben and Gad I gave from Gilead unto the rushing stream Arnon. So Gilead down down to the rushing stream Arnon. That's the part there. To Gad, Reuben and Gad. And the wilderness and the Jordan are the border from uh, Henareth, and unto the sea of the wilderness, the salty sea by Ashdoth of Pisgah from the east. And I gave charge to you at that time, that goes all the way down to the uh, salty sea. And that would be the eastern border of the Jordan. Uh, actually, not the Jordan. Actually, it goes over further to that mountainous area. So today, uh, the country of Jordan actually has part of the land of Israel. Will they get it? Israel get it back? Maybe. And I gave charge to you at that time, saying, The Lord your God has given to you this land by lot. Arming yourselves, go forth before the face of your brothers of the sons of Israel, everyone able. So these uh, Reuben, Gad, and Manasseh are to go across in front of the other Hebrews. Except your wives and your children and your cattle, uh, let dwell at your cities in which I gave to you, that are the ones on the other side of the Jordan, where they are now. Uh, for I know there are many cattle to you. Uh, so dwell there until whenever the Lord your God should rest your brothers, that is, they uh, rest them from war, as also you and they, the other brothers, should have inherited also themselves the land which the Lord your God gives to them not you, to them, on the other side of the Jordan. Then each shall turn back to his inheritance, which I have given to you. That is, um, the three tribes on the other side of the Jordan to the east. And to Joshua, uh, I gave charge at that time, saying, Your eyes have seen all as much as the Lord our God did to these two kings. So the Lord shall do to all the kingdoms unto which you pass over there. That is, Josh was going over. You shall not have fear of them, for the Lord our God himself shall wage war for you. And I besought the Lord in that time, saying, Kyrie, Kyrie, O Lord, O Lord, you began to show to your attendant your strength and your power and the fortified hand, all the might that he has and what he can do, and your high arm, the uh, defeating of these people. For what God is in the heaven or upon the earth who shall do as you did yourself according to your works and according to your strength? What Moses is doing here is softening up God, <laughs> telling, telling him all the wonderful things that he is, hoping that he will have mercy upon him and that he can go in to the promised land in spite of what God said. Passing over then, I'll see the, this good land, the one being on the other side of the Jordan, this good mountain, and the anti-Lebanon, which is up north. And the Lord overlooked me because of you. He's, again, he's blaming the people. It wasn't because of the people. It's because he didn't do what the Lord told him to do. And listen not to me. And the Lord said to me, let it be enough for you to not add yet to speak to me on this matter. So uh, God told him to shut up. No, this is it. Ascend upon the top of the dressed stone and lift up your eyes towards the west and the north and the south and the east and behold with your eyes, for you shall not pass over this Jordan. And you give charge to Joshua, Esu, same as Jesus in the Greek, and strengthen him and comfort him. For this one shall pass over before the face of this people, and he shall allot to them the land which you have seen on top of that hill, mountain. And we laid in wait in a grove in the vicinity of the house of Peor. Now, 
I think I've mentioned before where the pastor of the church would always bring up the thing about, well, actually Moses did get in through the back door because it mentions on the Mount of Transfiguration uh, when Jesus uh, was transfigured with his two disciples that he changed uh, and saw that he saw uh, um, Moses and Elijah. So therefore, Moses was in the land. So, uh, yeah, I guess it's it's true. He did get in there. Eventually, he did see, uh, but um, he will eventually die on this Mount Nebo. And from now on, more or less, chapter 4 all the way to the end of this chap, uh, book is uh, all a recapitulation of all the different commandments, laws, and things that the uh, people of Israel, the sons of Israel, are to, to do. So... It starts in chapter 4, as you see, guard the commandments. Hope you'll join us in the next video seminar. And again, God bless.